Um, okay, I, th I think I'm going to get started. I, you know, we have something here called uh, UC time, University of California time, which is always late. Um, but because this is a business class, I don't pay any attention to that. And um, I violated it by two minutes today, but I start on time. So anyway, welcome. Well, I'm sure we'll have other people joining us as we go along. Um, I want this to be an informal briefing because I really want to hear your questions and be able to respond to them. Um, you know, this is all about your understanding what this class is all about and, and getting your questions answered. And then uh, we have a great entrepreneur talk after I tell you about the class. So um, I guess it's a good place to start is to introduce myself. Um, so I am the Managing Director of Entrepreneurship at UCSF. And this is my major focus right now, this global class which I started during COVID because what else could you do but stay home and try to stay away from people? And it was just too boring for me. So I lasted about you know, three days of sitting around and then I said, well, it must be something I can do online. And, and this turned out to be it. Um, and it's, um, it's been an amazing ride and, and really great to have so many people engaged from around the world at this point. Um, but where did I come from? So. That's not exactly me with a lemonade stand, but I certainly sold lemonade. That was something we all did in the United States when we were little kids. We'd go out and you know sit by the driveway of our houses and sell lim lemonade for 10 cents a glass. And um, so that was the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey. And um, a lot of things happened after that before I ended up in this role. So I have an um, MBA from the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, and I have another master's degree from Columbia University. Um, I do not have a biology degree and uh, I am not a PhD, I am a business person and I've always been in the business around, we'll call them deep tech. First I did um, IT, I found it kind of boring and then I found um, I found Vertex Pharmaceuticals in the early days of biotech. And I don't know how many of you know Vertex, but it's now a multi-billion dollar company in Boston. And I came in quite early as uh, the director of corporate communications. And that was to talk to investors about what we were doing. And we were a startup and we had just gone public though. So there were a lot of investors who had a lot of questions. And that was, that was what I did was I helped my boss who was the CEO um, prepare his pitch and go around and, and create relationships. This book, um, The Billion Dollar Molecule is kind of a joke when it came out in, I wanna say 1992, because we were just this little tiny biotech in Cambridge, Massachusetts. But of course it, it became the case, uh, Vertex is a leader in cystic fibrosis. And um, my job was to keep that um, Barry Worth, who's the author, happy. And um, so we did that, we got published and I did another number of other things. So that was my start in biotech. And um, from there, I had business roles in a number of different early stage companies, some a little bit later, some a little bit earlier. I sometimes did work for venture capitalists who said, boy, that company I have is a mess. Can you go fix it? And I had to go in and try to bail it out of whatever situation it was in. Sometimes I was in a brand new company and helped them set up um, everything. And sometimes I did business development and did deals. So um, uh, collaborations with pharmaceutical companies and so on. So lots of different roles, always on the business side. Um, and then I got to love the global world. So there I am on the right, um, giving a talk in Morocco. And I do occasionally um, travel around the world teaching, speaking and mentoring. And, and that's, I love that. So this class is sort of a great fit for my passion. And so that that's me. And um, I'm going to let um, Beneath just uh, say a quick hello. We're going to let him tell his story a little bit later, but uh, Vineeth, why don't you um, say hi and, and give us your elevator pitch for what you're doing? You have to unmute Stephanie, yeah. I mean, it's such an honor for me to be here. And it feels like uh, 
uh, yeah, like going back to your alma mater to give a talk and you know it's 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 uh, such a homecoming feeling and uh, really quickly um, I'm Vinit Johnson the co-founder of Sophus Health uh, former UCSF uh, uh, employee uh, I'm an engineer by training uh, and to give you a quick spiel about our, our, my company Sophus Health uh, we are a no-code analytics platform for digital health uh, so we basically provide uh, no-code tools to help uh, access structured and unstructured data in electronic health records and also uh, predict patient outcomes. Um, you're also able to uh, compare patient cohorts and also generate uh, real-time insights from, 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 from our software. And so we essentially integrate into digital health um, EHRs and uh, we are built on fire and smart on fire technology. Great, thank you. Well, we'll hear a lot more um, from Vineet later on. He's gonna tell us how he got to where he is, how his path to become an entrepreneur and um, what role this class had in it, what role every, all the other influences on him. And uh, I'll just um, finish talking about him by telling you that he was accepted into a world famous accelerator called Y Combinator. And um, he'll talk about that as well. So look forward to that in a little bit. So, um, okay, let me, let me go on and uh, talk a bit about the class. And uh, just trying to clear up my screen. Great. So what's our value proposition? I, I don't know if you all know that term yet, but you will if you take the class. It's what value um, does your idea have or your product have? And this is my value proposition. I'm preparing to uh, tell you about an entrepreneurship course for professionals about science and medical startup business taught by Silicon Valley practitioners. So we have all kinds of people who've been in this class before. And if you look at the pictures that, um, that symbolizes the types of people we've had, we've had doctors, we've had scientists, we've had business people, and we've had entrepreneurs and many others. And I'll, I'll show you a bit about that too. So it's, um, it's a great class to meet lots of different kinds of people who are interested in entrepreneurship. And I am having trouble advancing my slides. So let me try again. Okay. So there are a lot of entrepreneurship classes out there. And the question is, how are we different? Well, we're very different because we're focused exclusively on life sciences and healthcare startups. Um, it's pretty rare to find that focus. It's very rare to find it outside a university, which you wouldn't be able to attend. They're, they're not open classes. Um, so that's what we do. That's what UCSF, University of California, San Francisco is so well known for. Uh, we actually started the biotech industry because uh, a venture capitalist approached one of our faculty members and they started Genentech together, very famous company. So for those of you who are not in the Bay Area, um, you may not be that familiar with UCSF, but we are a world leader in science and medicine and we have seven Nobel laureates and many, many other stars in, and we're a top rated hospital system. So that's what our focus is. Uh, we are in Silicon Valley and my network is Silicon Valley people, experts. And this class is not academic at all. This is, you are gonna be taught by practitioners. So people who are out there doing the investing, starting companies, working in companies, um, consultants to companies, it, we're all people who are actually doing it. So that's a very different emphasis. And then this is a very high touch um, class. So if you look at many classes that are available, they're recorded and you watch the recording and then maybe you, um, maybe you come to some sort of live session during the, toward the end, but ours is live with Q&A all the time. And in addition to that, we have a number of small groups and I'll talk more about what those are, uh, but those are opportunities to really um, interact with your, your colleagues in the class and also um, with the, the people running those small groups who are all from the Silicon Valley ecosystem. And then I also hold office hours. So that's one-on-one -on -one chance to get to know you and talk about whatever's on your mind. 
And then the last thing is we now have a global alumni network and it's been very, very valuable for people. So in the course of just three cohorts, we have over 300 alumni and they're from all over the world in all kinds of different jobs. And in fact, we're having an alumni event uh, in another month. So we provide opportunities for you to get together. And I'm gonna encourage you to put any questions you have in the chat so we can address them as we go along. Okay, so why should you enroll in this? Well, some of you will have ideas and you'll wanna know, could they be a business? Or is it just an interesting idea or cool science or whatever? And there's a huge difference between cool science and a business. And we'll teach you how to assess that. Also to understand business concepts and the language that goes around them. So um, as scientists, as uh, technical people, you, you know, business is kind of a strange language and you don't have exposure to it for the most part. Now, I'm sure some of you on this call are in business or have been in a startup or whatever, and, and that's not you, but for many of you, that will be the case. And we will, we guarantee you'll be able to speak like a business person by the time you're done with these 10 weeks. It's kind of amazing to watch how people go from zero to 100 in only 10 weeks. Another thing that you will gain is learning how to get investment. So everybody um, thinks, well, no problem. I've got cool technology and I'll just tell people about it and venture capitalists will write me a check for 10 million, 30 million, whatever your number is. Doesn't work that way. And there's a formula to this and we'll teach you what that is. You'll also get a great sense of the startup culture. You just, you will feel it. It's an energy that will be in our sessions that is just different than in academe, different than in other parts of the world in entrepreneurship. Uh, it's really a very unique thing. And it's what we have in Silicon Valley and it's exciting to bring it out to people. And then lastly, we talked about joining this global entrepreneurship network, which has tremendous benefit in, in ways you won't even know. Some. Someone just um, said to me that they love the class, but the real value to them was their colleagues, the other students and being part of that network. And so just put that in the back of your mind. Um, so I'm just gonna share with you um, a, a few of the topics and people who are teaching them. Um, the first, we're gonna start off with this talk about opportunity analysis and you know, if, you think you're gonna be an entrepreneur and you have an idea, and we don't want you to waste time on something that will never be a business. And we're gonna teach you how to figure out whether or not it can be a business. It's learnable and, and it's no great secret, but I'm not gonna tell you now, you're gonna to have to come to class. So um, this is Dave Hansel. Dave has done a little of everything. He's a scientist by training. Um, he thinks like a business person and a scientist. He's been an investor, he's um, started companies, he's worked for companies. He's just a tremendously knowledgeable guy and he's funny and a lot of fun. So I, um, I, I love starting off with Dave who is off on a, a van tour of the United States but promises me he'll have stable internet on the night of his talk. And so that's David. Um, working on my, why my can't advance. Okay, now I'm here. Um, so another talk is by Teresa Toller. Uh, so Teresa is, um, well, we used to call it HR, but she's, um, she's way more than that, I think. She's actually worked for a lot of venture capitalists, finding people for their portfolio companies. So VCs invest in companies and their companies often need to fill out their team. And that's what Teresa does. She's, um, she is an expert in finding people and good people to join teams. She loves doing our class. Uh, right now she's with a, another company called Graphite Bio. She's hopped around um, a number of very successful companies. And she's often brought in in the beginning to when, when the company's building their team. So um, 
she's always really, she's a very upbeat person and she's got tons of knowledge about what you should look for and what the investors would be looking for in your team. And then uh, we're gonna have a class on angel investment. And if you don't know what an angel is, an angel is somebody who invests for themselves as opposed to a number of partners. Um, so any of you, well, I, I can't say that any of you, many of you could be angel investors at least someday. Um, and you would have a chance to write a check that goes directly into a company as opposed to going into a fund which decides which companies they should invest in. And we have people from two different top angel networks. Uh, Darren is with Life Science Angels and he's an investor and he's been a board member. And uh, he, um, he will tell you how this angel group works because it's a group of people. And if you're lucky enough to pitch in front of them, they, you have a chance to get your story in front of dozens of people instead of one person in a pitch. So it's really cool. They are very selective. There are a lot of MDs and PhDs in that group. So they know what they're talking about and um, they're, they do great due diligence on companies. And the second angel investor that I'm having to come to talk is Ranjan Nag. Ranjan is the director of the MIT Alumni Angels here in Northern California. Um, he has a tremendous resume. He also has, is starting companies. He has an accelerator. He teaches at Stanford. And he runs a really good angel group. I've sat in a number of his meetings. He has a lot of life science in the groups. I think it's about a third or life science. And um, you don't have to be an MIT alum to pitch in front of them. So you see very, very, you have to be an alum to join, I believe, but uh, not to pitch. So uh, really, it's going to be a great talk with two different types of, um, of angel groups. And then we, one of our sessions will be an entrepreneur's story um, by Kun Wu Lee. And Kun Wu was my student and before COVID hit when I did another class called Startup 101. Um, and he left, he got his PhD in bioengineering. Um, and the next, the next week, he started this company called GeneEdit. And uh, it's been about... Um, five years before he raised $26 million in his Series A. Uh, he was a straight scientist. My class was the first exposure he'd ever had to business. And uh, I'm just so proud to see how he's matured into a real CEO. They have a big deal with Eli Lilly. Um, he, was, he was one of Forbes 30 under 30. And he's, um, he's just a, a great guy who hasn't lost sense of where he's come from. So I'm excited to be able to add him to the program. So um, this is our intellectual property attorney who is going to explain to you what is important about intellectual property and how to do it. Uh, Vern Norville is perhaps the best known IP attorney in Silicon Valley. Uh, he's at a firm called Wilson Sansini, which is also um, incredibly well known and respected here. Vern is, um, has been teaching for me for a couple of years. He's also working on a startup. He's helped many startups. And uh, at this point in his career, he really wants to help new startups coming along. So he's eager to, to teach here. And there are other topics that I'm not gonna go in depth on right now, but these are all important parts of the curriculum, customer discovery, business models, clinical regulatory, how do you deal with the FDA, the US healthcare system in general, and specifically um, insurance, because that's how you're, um, how entities get reimbursed. And you're gonna to have to understand that if you're doing a startup. Um, we have two venture capitalists coming to speak later in the class and partnering. I have both a pharmaceutical executive and a digital health 
um, executive coming to speak about that. So lots of great stuff. And then our, we have a couple of special guest lecturers. I mean, they're all special. So I feel a little guilty calling out these two people, but some of you may have heard of Steve Blank, um, who is no, sort of world renowned for having made people aware of something called customer discovery, which is how you figure out what your opportunity is. And Steve is gonna to speak to us about customer discovery. And then Daniel Kraft speaks all over the world. He's done a number of TED Talks. He has a conference called Exponential Medicine at Singularity University. Um, he gives a fabulous talk on the future of medicine and it's something, it's just a whirlwind through all the exciting things that are gonna happen. So um, I know you're gonna be excited to, to see those. All right, I'm gonna, gonna just pause. I'm checking the chat. I don't see anyone asking questions. Oh, check Elliot. Uh, yeah, do you want to just ask your question? Sure. Um, we're, we, I'm a member, an officer in the local technology transfer society, and, uh -huh. of course, and, and a lot of the tech transfer from here comes from federal labs. And annually, we give a 10-week introduction to technology transfer class. Uh, previously, it was at NIH. Now we're moving to uh, Montgomery College. But uh, we never have been satisfied with the textbook uh, or finding a textbook that we thought uh, was appropriate. And, and I was just uh, offering up the question whether uh, you, whether you all have perhaps found one that was suitable for similar purposes. Well, we it's not specifically focused on tech transfer, but I love our textbook, um, which is a great you know, a great overview of sort of everything you need to know to start a company. And I'm sure it includes tech transfer. I haven't looked at it for a couple of months. It's by uh, Craig Shimasaki. And uh, I'm sure he'd be delighted to have you check it out. So um, it's, um, maybe I can put that in the chat later on. So thanks for, the, yeah, thanks sure. for the question. Sure, how does he spell his last name while, while I'm here? S H I M A S A K I, and and just for for everybody, um, we have a great curated uh, list of readings for you if you join the class. That textbook we assign different parts of the textbook, as well as many other things from um, that are available on the internet. So that's another little bonus that you get. So okay, you. you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, and if people from other countries would like to just put in the chat where you're from, we'd love to see who's here uh, besides the people we've met. So um, in addition to the lectures, we have these bi-weekly sector discussion groups. And by sector, these are sectors of life science and healthcare. Um, if you're in, the, in this industry, you know whether you're working on therapeutics or diagnostics, digital health or medical devices. We've had people in class who aren't sure what their interests are, so they go to all of these subgroups. And um, it's a great chance to get to know people who are also have similar interests and to interact with our mentors. And our mentors lead the discussion. Um, this is the, I've listed the kinds of backgrounds they have. They're all people who are super experienced, who come from our ecosystem in the Bay Area who've either started companies or been in companies or invested in companies um, or do business development or are consultants in, um, in one aspect of the life science business. So they will be the leaders of these discussion groups which happen every, um, every other week. And we vary the time so that people in Asia, hello, Cecilia, I see you on my screen. So good to see you. Cecilia is here from Hong Kong. Um, so people in Asia can be involved live in these groups uh, half the time and not have to stay up all night. So um, that's another great piece of this class. And then we have um, a, another type of small group, which we did last time, it was a great success. It's entrepreneur war stories and people learn so much uh, by listening to entrepreneurs and what their path has been. Uh, it really helps you 
understand what it is to be an entrepreneur and what what the challenges are and what the high points are. And Brian Feth, um, who is um, a graduate of UC Berkeley Business School, Haas, and it founded a company called Excel Biosciences, is going to be leading this group. And he's got a bunch of people in mind that he's uh, inviting to join his small group and tell their stories. So uh, another thing to look forward to. So why take this class? Some of you may say, well, I'm not an entrepreneur yet. You know, just thinking about it, just exploring it. That's fine. Um, maybe you're working on a startup already. Maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe um, it's way in the back of your mind and you're just sort of curious. Um, I think Beneath was sort of more in that lane. Beneath is, well, we'll let you talk in a minute, but, um, or a few minutes. So you don't have to have a startup. You don't have to have a team. You can just come by yourself and check things out. Um, some people tell me they just want to benchmark on how we do things in Silicon Valley. They're from a different ecosystem. I've actually even had a company here in Silicon Valley who said, look, I, I think I'm doing everything I should be, but I just wanna make sure. So I'm here for the class. And then people in other locations often want to understand how we do things because we are a great model um, as an entrepreneurship uh, center. The Getting this mindset, yeah, I was recently in Europe and went around, met with a lot of different people in Spain and they all said, you know, you have just such a different mindset than we do here. And it's really hard for us to imagine what it's like to be there. Well, if you come to this class, you will get a good sense of it. And it's just a different way of thinking and acting and time scale, and you'll absorb it because that's what we teach or that's what we are. Um, you might wanna come because you're just generally interested in early stage ventures, either you're doing tech transfer or you're an investor or you know, you're running a part of an ecosystem or anything else, um, but it's a good way to learn. And then the network, I, I wanna emphasize how important this network is because people just keep telling me it's, you know, it's about the network and that they didn't, you know, they now have connections all over the United States and the world with people who are interested in various aspects of entrepreneurship. And um, it's, you know, it's all about the people and, and networking. And if, if you're in a lab, you might not really, um, get that because you don't have to live it. But those of us out in business know that the network is kind of everything for what you wanna do. Um, so who should take the class? Well, these are all different types of people who have taken the class in the past. And maybe there are some that I've left there. I left out my healthcare policy person from Washington DC who wishes she'd spoken to some physicians before she wrote policy for electronic health records 10 years ago. And um, so, you know, there are all kinds of different people. We've had um, people from the FDA who just think they might wanna do a startup when they're out of their government job. And we've had um, an intern from the National uh, Health Fund, sorry, National Science Foundation. So lots of different types of people. We've had some students as well and people who just want a career change, looking at different options. This is what our international alumni network looks like. Um, in just three cohorts, we have been in 24 countries and six continents. We really are working on expanding it even further. Um, we have alumni events, as I mentioned, and it's, a, it's just a great way to get to know people every, all around the world. Um, a few quotes from people. This course has been a life-changing experience for me. I've heard that many times. Uh, this man is in a mid-sized biotech here in the San Francisco area, and he's director of clinical science. And he just had so much benefit from this class. Um, this is, I see Cecilia is here. So Cecilia, I want to thank you for, this is um, a quote that you gave me. Uh, I just rewatched that video you made. 
And um, you can say it out loud. Do you want to read your quote? <laughs> Do you want to unmute and read your quote and say hello? Oh, maybe she can't unmute. Okay. Oh, oh, oh good, Cecilia, say hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Stephanie. So uh, thank you to UCSF for organizing an excellent entrepreneurship class. I recommend this class to anyone who wants to understand how life science startups operate in Silicon Valley. Excellent. And your title in Hong Kong is? I'm the founder and executive director of Innovation Forum Hong Kong. I'm in the process of setting up a new um, platform, uh, hoping to get into um, you know, uh, angel business and to run an accelerator on top of the Innovation Forum, which is a, a limited company by guarantee, sort of charity in Hong Kong, serving the Innovation Forum, which is headquartered in Cambridge, UK. Great, yeah, thank you. Cecilia was, um, she really got my attention because she would show up in what was in the middle of the night in Hong Kong, like 2 a.m. in Hong Kong for to, to get to a 9 a.m. Pacific time class. And I'd say, Cecilia, are you crazy? What are you doing? And she said, I took a nap and I had a little something to eat and now I'm here. And so good for you, Cecilia, you were definitely a dedicated student. <laughs> So thank you for being here. Um, this is um, a quote from Anil Kumar, who was um, in the class three times. I, I couldn't believe it. And we've had several people take it twice, uh, but he's taken it three times. This course has so much value. I've taken it three times. I always learn something new from the world-class experts. And every time I make valuable connections. And um, he's been a great asset to the class. He is the CEO of a diagnostics company. And this is um, this, a student from our first cohort, Donald O'Gorman, who's the interim director of the National Institute for Cellular Biology in Dublin, Ireland. And his view was alumni from the master class will be drivers of innovation in healthcare over the next decade. Um, and Donald was a, a, one of the crazy Europeans who was get up in the middle of the night to come to class also. So people really value this class. And it's, those are two examples. 94% um, would recommend the class. And we have a number of partners um, who very pleased. I, I think we might have some Singaporeans on this call. Enterprise Singapore, the Singaporean government organization uh, is now a partner. Johnson & Johnson just joined. Uh, Novartis joined, we have a Parisian university and UC Berkeley, my sister school is part of it. So um, many, many exciting uh, partners around the world and uh, we're pleased to, to welcome them. So some key facts, um, this is a 10 week class, two hours per week. People always ask me, well, what if I get too busy to come? And it, you know, that's fine. We record everything so you can watch on the weekend. Uh, we've had clinicians, I, I still remember I had a surgeon who was in the middle of a procedure and he took a pause to come and join a small group. And I'm like, no, go back to your patient. You know, the patient was there lying there on a, on a gurney. So he, I cut him off and I made him go back and then he caught up later. Um, anyway, people have, can deal with this all different ways. It's not a lot of commitment. We're starting in about um, a month, a month and a half. We've already talked about the different components, the online lectures, office hours, and small groups. It's both live and recorded. The big advantage of live is you can ask questions, Q&A, um, and, but if you can't do it, that's fine. We record it. 50% of the classes will be targeted to Asian time. I don't think we have any Europeans on this, but 50% go to them too. And then it should work for everyone in uh, the, the Western hemisphere. 
We've got an enrollment deadline coming up September 14th. You do not have to apply unlike many other executive classes. There's no application. We're happy to have you join if you have the motivation to be there. And it's a bargain compared to virtually every other executive class that exists. So our tuition is $12.50. And I am almost done. Um, this is a class photo. Um, we're always online, always virtual. This is not gonna change. This is a global class. Um, this is where you can sign up to join the cohort on that Eventbrite link. If you want more information, if you wanna read more, the link to do that is at the bottom, innovation.ucsf, et cetera. And my email is there if you wanna get in touch. And I think I'm going to leave that up. I thought I saw anyone in the chat. Um, anyone? Okay, let's just pause here and um, let me take some Q&A. So who has a question they'd like to ask? You can just raise your hand and speak up. Stephanie? Matt. Yes, please. I'm curious, um, do you offer any kind of uh, pass, no pass credits, a certificate? Is there some sort of recognition we can use after this to designate that we participated in and completed the course? You no, know, a lot of people put it on their LinkedIn, I've noticed, but we do not uh, provide certificates. That would require making everyone do homework and reading it. And it's just too big a class to monitor all that, see who comes to class. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Sure, okay. Who else has a question? Stephanie, I have a question. This is Swami. Hi, Swami. Um, I, I noticed that a few previous attendees have taken this course multiple times. Um, I completely understand the, the ability to network and grow your, uh, you know, the global network uh, every time you attend. But does the course content change year after year? So a little. Um, you know, I swap in and out different speakers. Some are the same, some are not, but, you know, but it's always new. There's always new things that have happened, new insights. So, you know, it's not that he just came for the network. He really sees a lot of value in the content itself. And then the small groups are always different because sure. you're in a group with different people and different mentors are leading it. So there really is a lot of variety. Okay. Is that, okay. yeah, okay. okay. Anyone else with a question? Stephanie, this is Elliot Levine again. I must have copied the author of the tech transfer book's name incorrectly. Can you spell it one more time? Okay. I, I wish I can't reach my um, chat to put it in there. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. Uh, I will put it in the chat now. Okay. I, great. I, Craig kindly. Shimasaki. I hope I've spelled it right. I'm doing it from memory, but that's what I think it is. Um, he's uh, a professor in Oklahoma, someplace or other. Okay. Okay, we'll take, Thanks. sure. Okay, maybe one last question before I introduce Vineet. Hi, Hi Stephanie. Okay, oh, two I'm so sorry, questions. you go ahead. Okay, um, <laughs> Anja and then Vanny. Anja. Thank you. Hi, Stephanie, it's good to see you again. Yes. Um, I have a question. I'm wondering what difference it would make to come in either as an MD, like after med school or as a specialist. What is your experience with that? Like coming into class, but also coming into the startup world. Are you asking me a specialist as in you've now done a residency and you specialize? Yeah, I don't think it matters, Anja. I, I think um, knowing a little bit about your situation that you are an MD, I mean, that's fine. You can start you know, you can explore entrepreneurship at any point. You don't need to know more technical stuff. This isn't about technical. This is about, you know, an idea that maybe you observe or you um, find, you know, get involved in in some way, either because you have a patient or you have a friend or whatever, and something that makes you passionate. And then you might want to start a company. So, okay. Be my advice. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, Lani. Yes, um, thank you, Stephanie. So I wonder whether there will be some, uh, you know, social communication channel set up for the cohort like Slack or something similar. Perfect. Thank you for asking. I forgot to mention that. Slack. Yes, <laughs> we, we do Great. communicate on Slack. There's also a LinkedIn group that you can join once you're admitted. 
And, um, and so, you know, there are a couple of different ways to do it, but I use Slack heavily during the class and other people do too. So great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you great, so much. Great question. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. Beneath, were you trying to say something? Besides, I should start letting you talk. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I was just, I was just going to quickly add to the point with the, you know, to basically add to Ancho's question. So, I mean, I was in a very similar scenario because my co-founder has an MD, and what we kind of realized is that if you're trying to sell your product to doctors, it's just really helpful to have an MD to talk to other doctors. But otherwise, in the startup world, I mean, you don't technically need an MD to or like a specialty or like, and if you want, totally based on your product. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks, Vineet. Okay. Well, let me um, let me introduce Vineet Johnson, who um, I've known through UCSF, where he was part of a group called Surgical Innovations as an engineer. So he was actually on the staff at UCSF when um, he got introduced to this class and joined it. And um, you know, his background is I'll, I'll let you talk through that, Vineet. But you know, basically. Um, was educated in India, came over here, and um, has a master's degree, if I've got that right. Um, it's not a PhD, but is also um, an engineer. And, and so he came to, um, I, I love the way he came. I'll let him tell that story, how, how he got from India to the US and UCSF. So um, Vineet, why, why don't I just, you know, unmute you. We're, we're now going to just chat together. Um, so just you grew up someplace in India, you knew you wanted to be an in industry. What about this entrepreneurship stuff? And why industry and tell us who you are? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to give a quick background, uh, you know, about about myself. Uh, uh, unlike Stephanie, I, I didn't I didn't grow up selling lemonade as as a kid. So I, this is not something which you know this is my very first uh, entrepreneurial attempt. And so I grew up in India. I'm I'm from the city called Chennai in in, in India, and um, I you know I'm, I'm 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 trained as an engineer, and I can quickly tell you as to how I I made my way to San Francisco. Um, and you know, uh, as when I was doing my engineering degree, I think you know uh, one of my my passions was actually um, working on um, brain computer interfaces. And as an engineer, you know, you, I was involved in a lot of signal processing, and um, and and given uh, the, the limited resources back in India, uh, you know, towards my last semester, I just thought, you know, hey, I think it would be a nice idea to actually. Uh, spend a summer either either in the U.S. Or, or in EU and get to you know work in some of the research labs and actually uh, spend some time trying to um, uh, work with actual brain computer interfaces rather than trying to um, you know work alongside uh, some some kind of uh, a a a more or less uh, conceptual and theoretical frameworks. And so what I actually did was uh, I I sent a cold email to uh, a couple of professors in the U.S. and I told them, "Hey, these are some projects I'm working on. Uh, I'd really love to come and you know uh, be a part of your lab uh, in the summer." And so I, I I sent an email to Dr. Ghazali at, at UCSF, who's he's right the founder of uh, of Neuroscape, which is basically a research group which builds um, digital therapeutics for um, for brain disorders. And so you know he was like, "Hey, you know if you can help arrange, you know if you can arrange your own funds and get a scholarship, you know more than welcome to join um, join us for the summer." And so um, luckily it so worked out that of course my paperwork and and I got a partial scholarship to to come to the U.S. And so I'm supposed to be here for three months in in San Francisco. And midway through, I think uh, they really liked I was what I was doing, and 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 I just you know joined on, and so. Uh, th that's how I, I got into the UCSF system as a as a as a specialist. Um, started my work uh, working in um, uh, at Neuroscape, um, helping build video games for uh, neurocognitive disorders. So, uh, if you don't giving you some background about Neuroscape, Neuroscape is uh, basically uh, you know they they were the lab which built the science for. Um, for uh, the world's first prescribable video game, uh, which is basically commercialized by this company called Keeley. And so um, I spent a couple of years there. I, I then, you know, really wanted to, um, to go follow the, uh, you know, I was working with really, really smart people at UCSF and, and, and also um, and all PhDs. And so naturally I was really inclined to, inclined to do a PhD and, um, and that changed midway through. And, and, and then I, I, 
decided, okay, I, I rather, I'd like, I like the, um, the pace at which the startup industry works. And so I actually, um, you know, moved a couple of jobs within UCSF, most recently being an engineer on the Surgic Innovations team. And um, yeah, and then I, you know, I took up uh, the course and uh, that's sort of like my, my background from, my, 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 from India to UCSF, but, uh, um, you know, Stephanie, I, I'll, give, I'll give it back to you if you want me to talk more about, um, you know, specific parts of the course or. Uh, well, uh, I'm just going to uh, point uh, out but, that yeah. you were very entrepreneurial in writing to these people with cold emails and where you ended up was a very famous faculty member at UCSF, Adam Gazzale. He's like one of our superstars. So, you know, that was the kind of initiative that an entrepreneur needs. And you started, you didn't know you were an entrepreneur then, Renith, but. I sure did not, but now I know as an entrepreneur, you always take your shot. So taking the right. shot is important. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, so, okay. So I met you, uh, you were doing this engineering stuff. You went into our, our first cohort, right? Was it first yeah. cohort? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, so what was that like? And what, what did you learn or what was, what stood out to you in that class? Yeah, so for me, you know, um, my background is UC, UCSF, you know, I was, I had done nothing which was, you know, close to entrepreneurial apart from like, I guess, sending a cold email. <laughs> but I was mostly involved in, you know, um, running research studies, writing grants, and, and, and in the uh, latest, um, the, the, when I when I when I, when I was when I took the course, I was you know involved in more of an engineering job. So we we designed and prototype uh, uh, medical devices. And so um, you know, Stephanie, it was the pandemic, and you know, you you were in you know, a way ahead than all of us trying to put together a course, whereas I was trying to attend a course. And uh, I, and, and and it so happened that you know my department sent around um, this this um, uh, flyer about this course, and which they said, hey, you know, we we'd love to ha have you guys. Um, uh, joined the course because I was working in a space which was very close to like the tech transfer office uh, and, and and also working closer to the industry and commercialization. And so naturally for me, um, I, I did not, I was not exposed to these sectors and these parts of parts of um, um, the, the healthcare world. And so I just thought, okay, this would be like a great, um, uh, great opportunity for me to actually learn uh, a lot uh, from these, you know, uh, hidden silos of the healthcare world, and and that was more the motivation for me to you know, take up the course. And you know, uh, and I, I think that's of course in one one thing led to another. I met my co-founder at the course. I the the kind of people I met during the course were, you know, uh, um, people who worked at the NIH, people who worked at Apple Health, people who worked at Intel, and and you know, you're you're constantly surrounded by uh, uh, you know the uh, the creme de la creme of the Silicon Valley uh, network, which was really, really helpful for me to just, you know, bounce ideas and understand what everybody's up to. And so, um, yeah, I think I think that was more of a motivation just to understand um, aspects as what what would what, just to get an exposure as to the healthcare world outside of academia and UCSF was was the primary motivation. Yeah, and and you started a group um, during class and persisted afterwards. Uh, tell everyone about that. Yeah, so one of one of my favorite uh, you know parts of taking the course is definitely the the uh, the small group peer forums, which you touched upon during during your presentation. And I think you know the the, the whole the, the whole way that was structured was really uh, you know really really valuable to all the, to all our classmates, where you know essentially we were put into put together in small groups and. Every group uh, had a, a topic. Stephanie, I know, I know, I I remember the topic of my group was fundraising, and so all of us were, you know, at different levels. I mean, some people, of course, had experience doing fundraising, writing grants, but people like me, before the course, you didn't know what angel investment meant or didn't know what venture capital was. I think just going, taking those small groups and talking to other people in venture capital in in our class, I think just opened like a a, a great, uh, you know, a lot of. Um, a deep, deeper understanding of of of, of, the, of of the fundraising world, and so I really like that format. And I think the first entrepreneurial thing I did, I mean, I mean, forget the company, but I actually right at, towards the end of the course, I actually started a, um, a a group called the Health Plus Innovators Forum, and that was essentially comprised of alumni from my first cohort. And so we basically were a biweekly group which met every other Friday and I was leading that and, and I, you know, I, through the class and also my experience at UCSF, 
um, I got a network with a lot of interesting entrepreneurs. And so we basically hosted an entrepreneur um, every weekend for like a, um, every other Friday for like a fireside chat kind of a setting and, you know, had them talk about their product, had them talk about their entrepreneurial journey. And of course, um, we, it was more like this. You could ask questions and it was more very, interact very interactive. And, and of course, that group grew uh, to a point where we had about 20 people uh, on, on some days attending attending the program. And so, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, with, with all my company uh, starting later on, you know, we, we couldn't uh, keep that going. But um, Stephanie, I mean, I was just telling you last week that, you know, I really want to uh, make a comeback and, you know, get that going. So if people who want to join the, this cohort, you know, I'm more than happy to, you know, uh, have you guys on, on, on that call as well. Yeah, and that was a great thing to do. You hadn't even decided to be an entrepreneur yet, if I recall. You were at that time. Yes, I I had not because <laughs> I was still trying to you know just like many people would be thinking. Many of you on this call, like I don't know if I want to start a company. I I'm just I'm going to want to do this just to you know. Um, it was more like a uh, touching, but dipping your feet in the ocean, and see how it feels, and that was more of like my my motivation as well. And that was where I was, and um, but. Uh, uh, alas, here we are. <laughs> so, what is it that caught, you know got you to start a company? Did you finish yeah, so, it. What yeah, happened? Yes. Yeah, so, so the very first thing, you know, and I think for me, when I look back, uh, of course, uh, I, I I did the course. I also um, started this, you know, uh, this, this biweekly uh, group meeting, which was, you know, got me exposed to a lot of people. They were able to network with a lot of professionals, but. Uh, whenever we start an idea, I'm like, I, that's it's totally dependent on personality. Like I'm a person um, who would, you know, I like working with people. And so the very first, um, I guess the milestone there for me was to find a co-founder. And that was like the very first thought, okay, like I, 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 I think I can do this, but my thought was like, I don't think I can do this alone. So, um, and I met my co-founder in the, the during during our first cohort class, and so he was a you know he's a, he's a chief president at UCSF, and so um, once we started working together, and once we started like working on our own ideas and started developing a rhythm, it's been like okay, you know, I think I can spend fifteen hours a day with this person and not get mad at this person, or like you know you know totally be okay, you know, working on on ideas, and so. Um, I think that was like the first sign of like, maybe this could be a possibility now that I found a suitable co-founder. And the, and the next, I think, I think the, the natural next step was, okay, uh, you know, you're working at UCSF, you have a decent job, you know, UCSF being like a world famous healthcare uh, research organization. Uh, what is the idea that you want to basically, at that point, it was a risk, right? It was a, a, a you, you need to have courage to actually like, you know, say goodbye to your 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 comfortable job and actually go out there and actually do this in the real world uh, and so it was more or less the next step was like okay uh, i have a bunch of ideas but where is that idea which you know which could push me to do this and 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 of course before we actually started so Self, my company which we're um, you know we're we're seven months in now um we had worked on a bunch of ideas every weekend we get together build something again, you know, bring it down to scratch. And that's the whole journey of an entrepreneur. Like you, you work on things, you validate things. And finally we did, you know, get an idea, which, which, which we, you know, eventually took the next step and of course, um, raised, raised some money for it. And, uh, which was the natural next step to, you know, getting into YC. So, um, I think that was my progression towards, you know, find a co-founder. I think I found that find an idea. I think, you know, that, that was an idea, which I was worth risking at all. And uh, it kind of paid out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great story. And if yeah. we have time, I um, want you to talk about YC or Y Combinator. Um, but I, I want to turn it over right now to see if anyone wants to ask Vineet questions about what he's done or what it's like or any, any questions from the group. Um, I know that um, Swami, just to answer your question, uh, no, there is not a, a project. This is not a project-based class. Um, but you know, it's up to you if you want to create a project and find a group, be entrepreneurial about it, and 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 go ahead and do it. Um, so, any other questions for uh, any questions of any sort for Beneath? Just pause for a minute. Yeah. Hi. I had a question. Sure. 
Yeah, thanks so much for sharing. Um, so I'm dialing in from Singapore uh, and I will be participating in the course virtually. Um, so in your experience, how crucial was it that you were in UCSF um, and in the environment? And do you think, you know, having those groups um, that you had, would you have been able to do that virtually? Yes. So, I mean, our cohort was also during the pandemic, so it was like completely virtual, right? And so I think I can answer the question that, I mean, since some of the classes were I mean, at that point in Pacific, you know, in the Pacific time zone, it was like more convenient being on the East Coast and being at UCSF. And also, you know, uh, UCSF being the host institution, you get to meet a lot of physicians from UCSF. And these are people who are like, you know, world leaders and what they do. Uh, a lot of, you know, you, you get to network through the UCSF system. And they were like, you know, uh, physicians who I met from UCSF, Stanford. And, but I, me being part of the UCSF system, I think it was, you know, like you see an, another colleague from the other department also in the course is like, oh yeah, I see you. I used to see you on the same floor. And so that way it was good for me to network within campus. But uh, I mean, for a person who's from, you know, not UCSF or, or if you're from another country, uh, I was still able to learn so much from people who were in the EU. For example, like, I didn't know what GDPR was until I met my my classmate who was from France and he like break it down for me. I didn't know what the regulations in, in Asia was. And so, uh, so that way, I think you get a global exposure to like, okay, different, how different healthcare um, ecosystems work and like, the good and the bad. And, and I think that was a great experience for me. Great. Yeah, and I, just to add to that, you know, given COVID, there aren't that many people around UCSF currently. So it really, um, when I go to campus, there's like almost no one there. So it, it really doesn't matter. It's, we're now global. We've all learned how to work this way. And, um, you know, one night I, I sat around after some small group and, and most of the small groups stuck around after the mentor left. And we were, there were two people from Canada, me from the Bay Area, uh, a scientist from Australia. And um, I think there's one other person from another part of the US. And, and it was amazing. We just sat around and chatted. I mean, we could have been sitting with a beer or a glass of wine, but we didn't have it, but we had so much in common. Um, that, you know, it, it just struck me that isn't this amazing people in all these different geographies were really all at the essence very much the same. Um, so I don't think there's a disadvantage. That's why we have this global class. It's a great question, Mayura. Did I say that right, Mayura? Yeah. Yep, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, other question for Vinith or for me? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Vinit. Yeah. Uh, Vinit, like, so when after the course, uh, so did you have an idea and then you found the right co-founder that you felt you could work together, or you had the co-founder and then you guys went and created an idea what you wanted to work on? So I think yeah, I, I, it's it's the latter. I I, I had a co-founder and we were uh, you know just like I said working on a bunch of ideas. We just built something and then we just like start from scratch all over again. And so uh, I think between the course and the class was actually between sorry between the course and when we actually went out and we actually incorporated the company it was probably like maybe nine months um okay. between the two and so you know zero to hundred within the course and then we of course we uh we had our own uh, uh, we were dabbling with our own um ideas until we said okay this is the one i think we we'll, we'll quit our jobs and actually try to try to do this on our own thank you yeah uh, just uh, give us 60 seconds on Y Combinator and how hard it is to get into it. Yeah. So really quickly, you know, Y Combinator is um, um, the world's most prestigious accelerator program. They they basically, you know, 20,000 companies or startups um, apply every year. Um, you know, I think they choose the top 250, 200 co uh, companies. And uh, it's basically a four-month program where, you know, they give you, uh, I think they changed, so they changed the deal last year. So they give you half a million dollars. Um, and they take what 7% plus an MFN clause on top of that. Um, and it, you are, it was essentially a, a four month program where they teach you a lot of things about the startup world. I mean, I'm not sure, I'm sure you've heard of Paul Graham and some of you may have read Paul Graham's essay. So Paul Graham is the founder of Y Combinator and he's like uh, the father of like considerably like the godfather of the startup 
uh, 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 senior year in Silicon Valley. So we learned we learned a lot from the experience. You know, if uh, and and just to let you all know, you don't necessarily need to have a startup to apply. Like I didn't have a startup to apply. I applied with an idea, and we got in. So if you know, um, if anybody would like to also explore trying to apply to Y Combinator and try to um, you know um, understand how that looks from a healthcare perspective, you know, I'm more than happy to chat more and and also help you out with the process. And you could mention that there's a two percent acceptance rate. Two yes. percent. Yeah. So it's basically yeah. a two percent except yeah, two point I think it's two point three. Yeah, two point three percent. Okay, well, you know, rounded to it's two yeah. <laughs> percent and, and you got into it with just an idea or not even an idea, an area you want to work in. So yes, but uh, again, again, with the same, they have a very extensive application process. And so the very first you know step is that you fill out this really extensive application, very really, you know, they they make sure you you think through your idea you give you know given they give you test different scenarios and then um there's a 10 minute uh rapid fire interview where they just give you 100 reasons as to why your idea will not work and you have to like basically prove like no i think it'll work i think it'll work and so uh, we we did that and so uh i definitely recommend you know trying to apply because you'll never know we never we didn't think we'd get through but then uh we just got to meet a lot of awesome people in 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 through y combinator um, got to meet a lot of uh, very smart healthcare founders as well, which you know are I, are good friends today, and which we are um, you know I, I still confide on when it comes to like making business decisions. So uh, definitely, definitely, I uh, encourage you guys to apply. So it's a after, great after taking this course, though, first first apply to this course, and then you can apply to Y Combinator. Right. You, you got to figure out the basics first. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. I. Um, we will stick around. I just um, being respectful of people's time. It's um, just past the hour. So if you need to leave, we understand. Um, but Beneath and I will stick around to just chat some more, answer some questions, whatever. Um, if you need to leave, thank you for coming. And we hope to see you again um, in the class. And I'm available to answer any questions. And so I'll take other questions from the floor now. Who else would like to ask Vineeth a question or me a question? And, and while you're thinking of it, I'm going to introduce Indra Takar, um, who is the project coordinator, program coordinator for this class and for uh, entrepreneurship at UCSF. And Indra will be a main contact point as well if you join the class. Um, yep. Say hi, Inder. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. How you guys doing? Yeah, just uh, you, you'll probably get emails from me. I'll be sending out a recording uh, shortly, hopefully soon for this event. So if you guys want to share that. Uh, but yeah, like, like Stephanie said, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, who has a question? So I'm, I'm, I guess I'll just keep chatting with, um, with Vineet then for a few more minutes. So um, tell us about product market fit and what, what does that mean beneath and, and what does that have to do with what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's definitely my favorite uh, uh, term from the course because I, <laughs> uh, you know, we and Stephanie, you love that term as well. And, you know, you it's my, yeah, it's my thing. <laughs> yeah. so I think at the end of the day, product market fit is basically, you know, sure, you have a great idea. You build a product which you think is, is really cool like as engineer you 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 kind of like get really excited for like oh i built this really cool app which connects all of my alarm clocks and kind of like just giving an example but uh um uh, yeah do you need a app to actually connect all of your alarm clocks on your phone i mean so that's essentially like a very basic um uh, um, a, 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 a scenario for for like what product market is is basically you think you build a cool product but I don't know if people are there out there trying to buy your product and it happens a lot in healthcare it happens a lot in the medical device industry where um, we we tend to start building things before vetting the market so before you build uh, if you have a cool idea or if you think you have a cool um, you know you're working on a cool product I think. Um, the ways to de-risk that or mitigate that would be to do an extensive customer discovery process and to do an extensive research on the market uh, to, to make sure that you're building something which the market actually wants. 
And then eventually, you know, you reach product market fit. And and once you reach product market fit, I think, you know, that's when you'll actually see those hockey stick, stick graphs and like uh, revenue and, and uh, investors love seeing those graphs. Yeah, I think um, Y Combinator says their most successful company ever was Airbnb. Yep. And, you know, I, many of you may be users of their product. Yep. They didn't start out with a product um, as it now exists. Yep. They Something very different, pivoted. Yeah, they pivoted. I mean, so basically for, for about a year now, so Airbnb is like one of the, the jewel stories of Y Combinator. So they basically did not find product market fit and they were not growing. Uh, they ended up selling cereal. They had cereal boxes. They wanted to make money so that they can sustain, and they actually made cereal to to you know actually make money. And they did that for a while until they figured out, oh, you know what? We can you know because it's air bed and breakfast, right? And so uh, and then you know they realized, okay, they went out. I mean, it's like a very inspiring story. They went out to their customers, initial customers. They spoke to them. They they stayed with their initial people on on the marketplace, and so. Um, it's something which, you know, it is not, unless you're really lucky, you don't find product market fit right at the start. It takes some time because you have to do, you have to understand what your customer likes and what the market uh, is ready to, 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 to actually imbibe from what you build. And, and that's a, a great example of a consumer product, but it's just as applicable in, if you're doing a therapeutic or a diagnostic or a device, your market is different. Um, the whole dynamic is different. Our industry is so much more complex than the consumer products industry. And that's what we'll teach you is how to understand all the pieces and figure out whether, you know, there's going to be a buyer because at the end of the day, if you're trying to do a company, you have to make money and you have to find investors um, because what we do is long-term and expensive. Um, you have to find investors who think they can make money. And, and so lots of elements to learn. It's, um, it's very, very important to understand the whole big picture here. So any other questions? Come on, someone out there must have a question. All right, well, I could stay and talk to Vineeth all night because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what he's done is so, wonderful that he, you know, didn't start out as an entrepreneur, um, didn't even really think he was going to be one. And then bingo, it's only what, two years later, not just about two years later, after the course, uh, not quite a year and a half after the course, yeah. uh, that, um, that he's not only starting a company, he went through the most prestigious accelerator in the United States, and maybe the world, and um, is has money and he's on his path to figuring out product market fit and having a successful company. Beneath any any advice for these potential entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs on the call? Um, sure. Before before I get yeah, I mean I'm I'm definitely you know I I feel like you know I'm still um, you know there's there's still a lot on the road of success for me, but um, I think just my early advice is people who you know who really are trying to. Um, say, hey, is this my right, you know, is this a thing for me? Uh, is this something which I want to jump into? Like, I guess uh, as an entrepreneur, like going back to my, my, my what I told earlier, you, you take the shot, you have to, uh, you know, uh, the very first thing which you learn from being an entrepreneur is like, you, you have to be brave enough to actually go and venture out by yourself. And, uh, and that comes with a lot of courage. And I think for me, when I started out, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just glad that I found a partner who also had the same level of courage as, as I did. And of course, uh, uh, you know, we, it, 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 it's still, it's, it's, it's hard, uh, when, especially when you're being used to, um, every time when you run into an issue, you always have a superior or you always have like um, a, a boss to actually run things by and like, hey, am I doing the right thing? Am I, is this the right thing? Well, when you're running a, a startup, you don't have a boss, you don't have, uh, a superior to go to and like uh, you just make big decisions yourself like things which I was really trying to understand was like okay do I have to spend forty forty thousand dollars on this on this on this you know piece of software or should I spend you know save that money for like a future hire or something so these are decisions which nobody can tell you which the right decision would be and so uh, it's 
it, it is a hard job. It is a it's high risk, high reward, and 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 I can I can confirm that every day you know you learn so much. It's like drinking water out of a fire hose, basically. Uh, and so it, it it's it's definitely uh, you know at this point I think just being so far with my with in my journey, I've just just learned so much. So um, it's it's hard, but you learn, <laughs> and and until until you see the big bucks. You you keep surviving, and that's that's like essentially startup one one, especially in the early days. That's great, great a great yeah. summary for the talk today. Yeah. And and really quickly, I'm I'm also going to be putting in my email on the chat. So if anybody has questions, which you know uh, they have later on, you know feel free to send me an email, and we can definitely you know I'm I'm happy to help in any way. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Vineet, for sharing your story, and thank you everybody for uh, coming today. I. Hope to see you in the class. Um, get in touch if you have questions. You've got the Eventbrite sign up if you want to just join. And uh, we look forward to the next time. So bye, everybody.